What's up, everyone? I'm Shafi Malik, and you're listening to the Who Dropped the Popcorn podcast. The premise is simple. One of us picks a film that we know none of the others have seen. The rest of the group watch the film, and we get together here to discuss it. Joining me tonight is Dave McHugh. Sweet liquor numbs the pain. Mm. Oh, you're so cool, Andy Newlands. <laughs> Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> And all the way from the somewhat north of England, Kyle Hammond. Hello there. Here's a warning. We'll be going into heavy spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, we thoroughly recommend you watch it before listening to this. Here's another warning for today's episode. We will be talking about a Korean film and none of us are Korean. So we would like to take this moment to apologize if we mispronounce any Korean names in this discussion. I can pronounce Park. It's not going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so Shafi. What film have you chosen? So a few, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, Kyle and I were discussing the podcast and he said that he hoped that someone picks a horror film. So I thought I'll take up the challenge. And um, I've picked 2016's The Wailing, written and directed by Na Hong Jin. Now, and the reason why I picked this film is because people seem to list kind of like the modern horror classics and they talk about Hereditary and Get Out and, you know, Correct. The Vivovich and all, all that stuff. And Correct. Rightly so, because those are, those are great films. Um, Max. feels like no one mentions this film. And also they talk about all the best sort of recent South Korean films and they talk about Old Boy and they talk about parasite and they talk about you know um i saw the devil and but no one seems to mention this film what one thing is that i know i'm sort of shooting myself in the foot here because i'm harpooning yourself in the foot fucking hell <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a clever joke man. <laughs> <laughs> honestly that's that was pretty good i'll take it back i'll take it back <laughs> I, th- I think it's quite difficult for me to recommend um, people watch a horror film because I think I think it's horror the horror genre is like one of the most subjective genres there because the thing is is that how effective a horror film is is not got to do with just the film itself but the actual person watching it so oh, for instance mate. some some people will find like arachnophobia the scariest film but you know yeah. i don't find that film scary because oh. i'm not afraid of spiders you know um the reason why this film was sort of effective with me was because something that i've sort of lived um with right throughout my whole life is no knowing sort of what to trust and what well what to believe and not what to and not what to believe when from a religious standpoint so you know so that's why you know and it might be that two of you might turn around to me and say well this film didn't work for me at all which is fine um but i just thought there'd be sort of a lot to discuss about this film anyway so um before i turn it to andy and ask him to do a recap of the film kyle can i just ask you what are your regarding like the horror genre what films what are the sort of big tentpole films you have seen and what, what, are, what are your sort of blind spots regarding the genre? Horror? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen most of the 80s ones, kind of modern horror, none, like hardly. I've seen Get Out, um, but, you know, things like Saw, I've not seen any Saw films. In fact, my mate was like, do you want to go and watch Saw 4? I'm like, well, I've not seen fucking 1 to 3, so not really, no. So, yeah, just kind of dropped out a long time ago. I've not even seen, like, uh, the new It and all the remakes and stuff that they've been doing. So now I'm, um, I'm really kind of out of the loop. But, I mean, there. I guess you've seen a lot of uh, 80s horror films. There are a lot of 80s yeah. horror films. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the 80s ones, yeah. But that's when you're, um, like, 12 years old and you're like, oh, is it scary? No, not really. <laughs> Uh, how about you Andy what's your sort of experience with the horror genre so I love horror I love it all like god so I can't I can't watch like horror in the cinema because I know how frightened I get so I'm a watch from the lounge horror the last horror film I watched in the cinema was the Blair Witch Project with you guys (laughs) um, I love it all I am 
the hills have eyes saw i've seen all of those the purge if you can call them um horrors all the ghosts ones um with Ghost. that guy who played harry potter in love all that um, the Patrick ghost Swayze. one with eddie murphy yeah, that's what love i thought that. i thought it was about this patrick swayze film was it what the I sequels love, yeah mate i love that's a, that is a great film actually but yeah i i love horror uh, paranormal activity all of yeah, that stuff i can't get enough of it bigfoot sure. all those sort of ones <laughs> that came after blair witch i love it all i love Harry it all. and the hendersons yeah i love it it's um sometimes if I don't have time for a full horror film, I'll watch like um, YouTube clips of like horror movies for 10, 15 minutes. I, uh, oh, idiot. I, idiot. I think they're great. How dare you? Idiot. You should never, ever watch a, a horror film on a YouTube clip. You have to watch the whole film. Don't ever watch I know, that. I've got two kids, so sorry about but that. Most... <laughs> we discovered last week that Newlands is the TikTok cunt of the group, isn't he? So... Uh... <laughs> yeah. oh, C bombs C being used a lot tonight. I think Kyle, let's delete all use of that word, please. Yeah. So yeah, I I I love uh, horror horror films, but I uh, can't watch them uh, on my own. I certainly can't watch them late at night in a dark room. I'm, I'm too too much of a scaredy cat for that. Uh, Dave, I I know the answer regarding the, the question that I've asked the other two. So we're gonna. I've, I'm not ignoring you, but I've, I do have a question for you. But I'm gonna ask it after Andy's recap. So um, what about the audience members that were like on the edge of the seats to ask what horror films are? Like? Go uh, on. The, let me just. I don't think. Oh, come on, please. Oh, let me just check the comments. No, there's none, mate. You can't. Dave and Mary uh, from St. John's are interested. <laughs> What's that film where, like, the cars go mad? They've got, like, a mind of their own and they're, like, trying to kill Christine. everyone. What's that? Trans- no, the film. No, where all the cars, it's, like, it's got this mind of its own. It's, like, well scary. And the Car- cars Christine, try and kill everyone. Uh, guys bananas. <laughs> Don't I? I think you're talking about Christine. Who's Christine? I'm talking about a film, mate. What? That's 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 a Stephen King uh, film. Oh, is that called Christine? Is it called Christine? Why is it called Christine? Um, okay, so Andy, do you want to? Yeah, just um... ignore him, mate. Just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andy, I'm uh, I want I'm looking forward to now. The thing is, is that there's a lot of plot in this film, so I don't mind if we do a what we did with Buckery Bonsai and sort of help you out. You know, if there's any sort of things that we think that you sort of missed, because uh, there's quite a lot to cover. This is a song. Hey, 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 what's that you say? It's Andy's articulate analysis. There's a song. <laughs> so, yeah, wow, the wailing. I think, um, I'll tell you what, Kyle, for your acting debut, this is one of the best films uh, <laughs> I think you could have chosen. So, <laughs> congratulations on that, mate. You nailed it. You nailed which, it. Which one, mate? Which one? The main character, man. The policeman. <laughs> yeah, the main character. <laughs> He's like a Korean version of Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's all right, man. Really, nah, that, no, that was really good. That was really good. I didn't. I might jacket. I might jacket. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's You're a very handsome guy. He's that. a very he handsome guy. You are very handsome guy. Right. In your wedding, yeah. you very dumb. <laughs> Um, can I just check if Dave's if Dave's uh, dropped off before no, I I'm continue? Still, I'm still I'm still here. Oh, great. Okay, what can I say about the whaling? The whaling, the whaling might be the best film I've ever seen. Oh, this, this, yes. here we this. go. <laughs> oh. Can we Sorry. meet Dave? Carry on. Can we meet Dave? Because it's just no, no viewer is just going to want not, negativity. We, I'm not having this it? every week. Kyle. The best film I've ever seen. The best film I've ever seen. Just oh. it's what it's kind of what I love about. Um, uh, I absolutely love this film. Yeah. It was Great so time. entertaining, and like if I think about a film like Blood Simple that just goes on and on and on of hour after hour after hour, this film I was like, oh no, it might be a bit like that, but um, superb, Shafi. And I, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I said to Jen, "Do you want to watch this film?" I, I'm not sure what it's about. It's Shafi's choice. I think it's about a ghost in a forest, and it's in Korean. And uh, Jen was like, "No, thank you. That's that's <laughs> not what I want to do." So I was like, "Okay, no worries." So I started watching it in bed, and she was there as well. And after ten minutes, she started following it, and she watched yeah. it all the way to the end as well. Oh, nice! Amazing. Okay, so, um, how yeah, did she? What was gosh. it? 
Well, how did she find it? What was her reaction? She's pretty much the same as me. She thought it was absolutely awesome. Like, so <laughs> really? hands down, this, I, I, I like, so we lied to you, but I, this is the best horror film I've ever seen. It was so intelligent and so smart. And basically, I'll just go high level and then we can delve into this because I, this film is so good that I won't do it justice now. But essentially, there's a Japanese man and he, he basically turns up in this rural uh rural village and then over the course of the film like people start getting getting like infected it starts from the perspective of the protagonist right and the protagonist is who kyle <laughs> he's a cop he's a he's a cop right he's a police officer in this yeah movie. so this is the thing as well like this it's so mental like when the film starts like oh, i'm just gonna go off on a tangent here but it the cop is like i was like is this is this gonna be some like comedy like it's this cop just yeah. like some silly comic like character yeah. that's just that's gonna really get away. Point. yeah it's just it was so mental it's like mm, this is going to be a bit naff if this is just like some slapstick nonsense in a rural village and stuff but then yeah. um my god is it is it couldn't be further away from that if it tried like this character i mean god almighty lots of people go on journeys but the, the character development of this guy was off the chain basically the story is japanese guy turns up in the village and there's lots there's lots of crazy things that go on and i won't i won't get into those now because we'll we'll delve because there's twists there's more twists and turns in here than a bloody twister lollipop so <laughs> um basically people in this village start start um like dying there's like murders happening left right and center like there is this japanese man and like you just get a feel for like mm, something not right with this japanese guy and then like it, for me as a viewer it was i call him the japanese stranger that's what i'm going to refer to this guys well the character's so, um, name is the character's name is the japanese man the japanese man all right i call him the japanese yeah man. and the funny thing is i gave that warning at the beginning of the episode but it's quite the character names are quite simple because you could say G- Gion's the, the, the protagonist, but then it's the Japanese man. You could say the shaman, you could say the woman in white, and you could say yeah. Gion's daughter. So, because those are the sort of big five players right. of, the, of the film, right? Yeah. Oh, and the priest, the priest as well. So that's an easy one to. So, yeah. Okay. So high level, this guy's a cop. And um, so basically it's all getting a bit weird. And then one night they're at the station, it's raining and there's like this naked <laughs> woman at the door. And then like Funny, she, ki- she kills the family. And then at, at the crime scene, she John kills Goon, her own family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the, um, the copper sees this young woman, um, Mu Myung, which is no name in Korean. And she's, but she basically says, look, the Japanese man is, responsible for this and he's a he's a ghost and then so um, call her the woman in white the woman in white okay yeah. so he's like what the, what's going on so they basically go into the forest and um you know there's lots of other stuff that happens but blah, 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 you know but into the forest look, crazy stuff's going on they go back to the forest one of the first things is that they try and go to the house and they take yeah. someone with them he starts bricking it and, yes, uh, this is the crazy um, stuff. So he start he starts bricking it, and then he goes, "I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to go up there." Then he sort of trips over, and then yeah, uh, and then they go, "Oh, well, you're right." And then he stands up, and he gets, uh, he gets electrocuted by by lightning. Hit on the head by lightning. It was insane. And then so so then they or take sh- him to or struck him. by lightning. Maybe. Yeah, sorry. So he uh, so he he they take him to hospital, and they hear some craziness going in another room in the hospital, another hospital room. They go oh, into the other hospital room and there's one of the craziest contortionate, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it's like collarbones snaps. Yeah. It breaks your collarbone. Yeah. Man. What the fuck? It's, yeah. Oh my word. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So, so well put Shafi. That's, that's basically what I meant by the crazy stuff. Cause it, it is in so oh, then, my word. So then they say, sorry, sorry, I'm taking over Andy, but, it's almost comedic, the piece of his reaction yeah. to that guy's dying. Mm. A lot of his reactions to it are all always comedic, a bit slapstick. He was an interesting character. So they decide to actually go to have another attempt to go into the Japanese man's house and they take the priest with them. And yeah. sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting, Andy, but... I, no, no, I, this, it, it's I, so good. Like, 
I think it's Could worth you say the, de- the debut of Andy's song for his bit and Shafi just fucking takes over. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It's <laughs> Shafi's but... review. It's Shafi's review. <laughs> sorry, but uh, one thing I, I just want to say that this film really is. What was the phrase you used last time, Kyle? It's it's a film of three halves or something. Um, yeah. But it, it, there's three sections in this film. The first third is quite comedic and you're and as Andy said it's you're thinking well am I watching it or a comedy that's sort of like a horror comedy then what happens is when they get to that Japanese man's house the the tone shifts like completely where it gets really it gets really dark as in you know the tone gets really dark and it gets serious once they find out that they find basically the the police officers um, sh- uh, daughter's shoe in the in in the Japanese ha- man's house. So sorry, yeah. take it, take it. But then, the, yeah, no, the, well then, said. So he, yeah, yeah. The Japanese man has like a, um, I guess you call it like a worship room, and he's got all the photographs up there of the the murdered people. So, like at face value, you're like, well, this this is him. This is this is definitely the the killer. And like you say, when. When the policeman, it's like it hits home. It's like, oh my god, it's he's after my daughter. He just goes into dad mode, like it's next level. It just changes like completely. And then there's just this amazing scene where like there's this like dog outside, like mm-hmm. this black, you know, this black yep. dog, the devil's dog, you know, like old school, like pirates, black beard and this dog, and he gets loose and he attacks. Do you remember, uh, do you guys know about um, Hades and his dog? Yeah. Do, Hades has got, a, uh, the, Hades is the god of the underworld, right? And he has a dog, a black dog, that he, that guards the underworld? Is that the three-headed dog? Yeah, Greek mythology. Yeah, yeah, Cerebus, yeah, 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 yeah. Often yeah. referred yeah, Cerebus, to as the yeah. hound of Hades. Yeah, yeah. He's multi-headed yeah, so, as well. Yeah, three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, so po- possibly I don't know, but maybe that's a reference to, to that. But oh, de- definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent. It was awesome. Into, into the pit of Hades, one hundred percent. Is that? Did you think that, Dave, when you're watching it? Um, no, mm, but theology now I do. A level. Mm. <laughs> well, mm. I've got a lot to ask Dave because I think there is a lot to talk about regarding theology. But we're going to get to that. Don't worry. Okay. No worries. So, so yes, yeah, so the dog, the dog goes into the room and he has a fight, and like the, um, you know, the policeman kills kills the dog. And then he basically gives the Japanese man three days, three days to leave. And then he goes home, and then, like in the morning, they open up the gate, and um, I thought that the dog was hanging from the gate, but apparently it's a goat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's, um, a, it's, a, goat. Like it's a dead goat hanging there, and. Um, it's at this point where his daughter um, starts showing like really violent behaviour, a massive change in health. Um, you, you're given the nod that she's possessed because she's stuffing her face full of uh, food that she wouldn't normally eat, you know, like fish, etc. Um, so you're like, oh no, like uh, the the devil is uh, the demon, and or she's got is she's now. got marks. Uh, she's got marks on her body as well, right? Yeah. So at this point, the mother-in-law gets involved and says, right. We uh, we're, we're going to get a shaman to um, to, uh, to to try and uh, get get rid of this uh, wick, wicked um, spirit. Um, so I think at this point, this is where it gets a bit mental because, like, the police. I think it's around this bit where the policeman is guarding a house um, and he sees the woman in white again, and she's throwing stones. And obviously, Shaf, you'll talk about this later on, but I presume that's a reference to uh, casting the first stone and, you know, sin and all these references that we'll get to later oh, wow. on. wow. Wow. Nice. And, uh, I didn't even you know think I mean? about that's, that. I didn't, that's I didn't what even I, think that's, about that. Yeah. That's what I thought it, it was anyway. And she's just, you know, throwing stones like constantly, constantly. And then he goes into the house and um, see, the, you know, the Japanese man's in there. And he's, again, because he's done this throughout the film uh, a couple of times, he's like, just wearing like some sort of diaper loin cloth and just eating raw animal flesh like in the in the forest and then he chases the policeman and then it gets a bit weird to me because like the policeman just wakes up so you're not sure what's what's real and what's a dream and but it's still so I am um, gosh this film's 
quite long, but it's wonderful. I might have missed out a bit, but the next bit in my this mind is like, long. is about basically the the rituals happening. So there's lot like there's lots of other things happening, but essentially there's this ritual. So, and I when I was watching the ritual, I'll be interested to talk about this. I completely got it wrong. What was actually happening in reality? So yeah, so I I think because I've got a lot to say about that sequence, but. I yeah. think, yeah, that's we'll, that's we'll get to that. Because, well, that yeah, that needs a proper yeah. chat about it. But, um, yeah. Well, there's yeah, two sorry, rituals, just, isn't there? I'm, I'm massively yeah. rambling on here. But, yeah, the, um, rave, the rave one, basically. Based the yeah. Matrix Revelations the, um, rave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so they, so the, uh, the guys are like, right, we've got, to, we've got to go get this Japanese man, we've got to get the Japanese man. So they go back out to the house, and as they're going there, the Japanese man, like, sees this like dead body he 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 rounds up all his boys to basically kill him right yeah it's quality it was, it was like man. denzel in that cafe in uh american gangster where he just goes out and pop pop see you later it was it was good fellas in career i love that scene mm. so they try and chase that guy down and then there's this um <laughs> this is there's like this dead person in a jeep and you gotta remember that because it turns out to be important but also one of the scenes in the movie that i didn't particularly enjoy but we'll get to that later and he's the, the guy and then, um he killed his family hadn't he yeah that's the crime yeah. that they'd just been to he'd killed all his family yeah yeah so um so i'm just trying to think sorry did the did the shaman rituals happen before the zombie scene or was that after because that all yeah yeah it says before before it's before the ritual happened before yeah, 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 yeah. The the cop and the shaman driving in the car, and the shaman is saying the Japanese man is dangerous. We have to get rid of him. Um, okay. The... Okay. All right. So for the purposes of this, then there's this ritual going on. Uh, on on the top layer, what you're sort of meant to think is going on, I guess, is the shaman for ten thousand pounds is doing a ritual to uh, remove the evil spirit from the policeman's daughter. And he's done lots of things, you know, he's removed a, a crow from a bucket of soya sauce, which you're meant to believe was placed there uh, by the demon, etc. And then the film flicks to the um, to the Japanese man also doing a ritual. So the way it's shot, and this is all I say on it, and then I'll move on. In my view, you think that they're fighting one another, and I'll leave it at that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, then the film for me, I was like, I was like, oh my god, please don't, don't be crap now. So the guys go to the man, the, the find the Japanese man, and they get attacked by the, the the dead zombie, and that for me was like five minutes where I thought, oh no, oh no, this they've turned this into a zombie film. Please don't. So anyway, that happened, and it was the usual nonsense, you know, bites to the faces, rake in the head, just absolute nonsense for a bit. But fine, whatever, it, it happened. Um, then they're driving back, a body falls from what appears to be the sky, but it's obviously the cliff, and um, the woman in white is looking on. Before that, they almost find the Japanese man. The Japanese yeah, man is, yeah, is yeah. hanging on to a rock. He falls, he's in a lot of pain, and you see the woman in white looking on. Then, and he's ge- and he's genuinely genuinely in distress, isn't he? He's in a lot yeah, of pain. Oh, massively, he's crying, massively, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, sorry, Japanese man falls from the cliff, or whatever. They throw his body over the um, the cliff, and um, the woman in white is there. Um, the um, then there's I can't remember exactly what goes on, but there's this bit where the shaman is leaving, and his car gets attacked by what seems like a plague of locusts or whatever. I think he comes back, or I might have got this wrong, maybe he left, but at some point he, he sees the white woman outside the house and he starts violently vomiting yeah, blood. That's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, Jeez. it's crazy. I mean, he knows me first, wouldn't it? And then... This is where the third part of the film takes place, where it takes another U-turn, because oh, yeah. his daughter's been healed, basically. You know, they, yeah, they find his daughter okay and, and, you know, they have a big sort of cry and, you know, and uh, yeah. uh, she well, he keeps on asking her if she's okay. And um, so you sort of, and this is where the basically, it's half an hour left of the film and it takes a kind of a 180, I guess. Yeah, and the last half hour is insane because everything I thought 
I was certain on was just like, who the hell is the bad guy here? Because as the viewer, there is a good 15 minutes or so where you're like, is the woman in white the bad person? Is the Japanese... And they set it up better. Yeah, I'm not oh, really... I, I thought the Japanese man was dead. I thought he was dead. And then yeah, the, me the, too. the demon had me transferred too. into the woman. So I'm thought, yes. oh, she's the bad guy now, yeah. Because yeah, the, the Japanese man is yeah. the one that falls off the cliff. And they throw yes. him away. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I know what he did last summer. There's, there's, just, there's just no way of being certain at this point in the film as to exactly who is the bad person, you know. So, yeah... Uh, and then it, then it's brilliant. Like the woman in white basically says to the policeman, "You've got to wait three times for the rooster to crow." Or the, his daughter disappears. Right? He's wondering where his daughter's gone. Yes. And then he finds yeah, the woman in white. Yeah, he goes. Out, he goes to find her. Sorry, yeah, and, and instead finds the woman in white, and yeah, she's basically yeah. saying, "You know, look, I, I can protect her. I'll save your family. You've got to trust me. Put your faith in me." don't go back to the house until the roost you hear the rooster cry three times then he gets a phone call from the shaman and the shaman saying don't do not trust the woman in white do like do not trust the woman in white she's you know she's trying to tempt you blah 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 so and then at the same time you've got the priest who's gone back to the japanese man's house and he goes into the cave and he finds the japanese man so right now as a viewer you're like what is going on is the shaman in cahoots with the woman in white is he in cahoots with the Japanese man it is like what is going on here and then unfortunately for the for the policeman he he sees on the floor the his daughter's um uh, not braid band but like a hair clip and in his mind he's like oh no the woman in white like basically she's got uh, something of my daughter's and therefore she's like you know she that's his kind of cue like she can't be trusted and uh, he goes back to um, the house, and as he walks across the threshold, the plant that that's kind of been in all the little death scenes withers and dies immediately. And he goes in, and obviously, you know, the daughter's killed everyone, and you know, you're she she turns up, and you're meant to believe that she then goes on and kills him. And then in the cave, the priest confronts the Japanese man, and is like yelling at him, and basically says, "Oh." You know, that's you know, tell me who you are and then I'll leave you alone and I'm gonna get out of here. And then the Japanese man says something along the lines of well, who says I'm yeah. gonna let you leave oh, and then yes. takes a photo of him and slowly turns into now I don't think it's explicitly stated, but he's either a demon or he is the devil. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the devil because that's that, I don't know, I'm not sure. I, I I presume he's a demon, but the the, the, the priest said, Are you the devil? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. He's 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 a, a you know a massively evil uh, character. So that's that's when you know, like, oh my word. And then um, to to finish off, the shaman goes back into the house to find the copper lying on the floor. And as he leaves, he spills a box, and it's got all the um, all the pictures of the dead people. So at that point, you find out that oh my word, the shaman is in cahoots with the the demon. Yeah. And the woman in white was essentially an angel. And it's at that point you then can start thinking back to previous scenes, such as the rituals, and see them in a totally new light. It's one of the best films I've seen in a very, very long time. So well done, Chaff. Kudos to you. Um, that, thanks, that, Andy. That, that, was, uh, that was good. Um, we will get, we will, I think we, you know, there are sort of stuff to say about kind of particular sequences and stuff like that. Um, and we'll sort of do like an analysis, but Dave, I would have sort of put you as the, the horror connoisseur of the group. So I'm right. <laughs> what would you say is what, because when I was watching this, it reminded me of other, of other horror films. There are sort of obvious like, nods to other horror films so what did you find that distracting as you're watching the film or or did you see this as an original experience no like it was weird because when it was kind of revealed that oh actually maybe the japanese guy is this weirdo that doesn't really mind being seen as the weirdo and but it turns out that he's actually trying to help and i was like oh if that's if that's what this film's doing in 2016 i was furious i was raging oh it actually turns out the japanese guy he's not the bad guy he was actually trying to help but he does have so he has to do a weird ritual 
to help. So I was furious. And I was like, if that's it, I am so angry. And I really did believe that that was going to be the case. I mean, it kind of reminded me, it reminded me of The Exorcist, of course, because you're dealing with a, a young girl that's possessed. It reminded me of The Last Exorcist and Mary Rose, because I thought that, that I actually thought the shaman was going to be a um, complete fraud. I thought it was just a money man, like a, a kind of, you know, just does it for the money. It's just bullshit and just makes fun, like kind of plays on the older generation's emotions and stuff. So it reminded me of those two films. When, when I sort of rewatched it recently, the nod to the sixth sense, when he's going through his daughter's book and she's right, do, doing all those mad drawings. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's been in loads of horror films, hasn't it? When a, yeah, it's been in loads of horror films. When a films, parent yeah, is suddenly yeah. looking at why, why has my kid gone so mad? Yeah, and yeah. Even any kind of child-based horror film now, to me, just feels like, oh, come on, I get it. Wow, the devil's actually in my child. Why have they gone for the innocent? Why have they gone for the young? Is it easier to possess a young person or are they just so demented, these evil spirits, they choose the kid for their own amusement? Because I guess if a really old person goes deranged, it might not seem as bad. But yeah, no, it kind of it nodded to a lot of horror films. And I'm trying but to you don't like find that, that you don't find that distracting at all or anything like that. Well, no, like like Kyle first mentioned and Andy then mentioned was the comedic style of it at the start. I struggled to ever leave that. And at points, even during the mad zombie scene, I was like, Yeah, am I watching short? That, yeah. I, I, honestly, it I just thought, you know, why not put a Queen soundtrack on this yeah. whilst they beat it up? But I was just literally <laughs> like, this is shit now. I was so, I was just like, what the hell? So you might as well have just been in the Winchester pub listening to Queen whilst he tried to beat it up. And, but that's, that's again, that's because obviously I've seen that film with Simon Pegg in it. So I don't know, it, that might not be the Korean director's fault, but I was just like, oh, what? And, the, and then they're kind of, like the thing is I've always found in horror films that people keep it together far too well because I would be just in tears shivering in the corner I couldn't cope other horror films it's like they seem to be okay with it especially supernatural stuff it's like what the hell so so these are like grown men and they're like crying their eyes out like little kids and I I was like it seems kind of comedic but it's exactly what I would be doing yeah. yeah. One thing, and I'm not the first person to do a comparison, but is and it's because you guys, I don't think anyone else in the group has seen it, but um, there's a film, uh, is Memories of a Murder, and Memories of a Murder is very similar to this in the fact that the film starts off with a bumbling cop, and there's a lot mm. of comedy in the first like half an hour. I think it's sort of like a, it's a trope in Korean films. They don't have these sort of tall dashing kind of heroes i think a yeah. little, i think they i think the the sort of their protagonists that they identify with are sort of bumbling and a bit sort of out of shape and they must love copland then <laughs> <laughs> but it's great i i get it what you're, basically what you're saying is this this isn't arnold schwarzenegger is it yeah. this is just a, a normal guy who seems quite poor and he finds himself in the craziest situation you could ever be in. And he's just hes just literally a normal guy. So it does and make it scarier. The, and the thing is, is that the um, our sort of perception of the cop changes, because Andy didn't bring up that there's two, there's two visits to the Japanese man's house. The first one, they are sort of bumbling about because the dog sort of starts attacking them. And they, you know, I think our our view sort of, flips around when it comes to that second visit because we're going, well, is this like an unreasonable xenophobic attack yeah. on a Japanese man? And, you know, we're not on the same page as the, the you know, the cops, you know, yeah. who was our sort of surrogate. So Kyle, I mean, what, regarding the fact that you had like a, you wanted someone to kind of recommend a, a horror film, how sort of effective was this as a horror film for you? I didn't really click it was a horror film probably until well late into the film. Right. The first, I watched this film in two halves. I know you said not to do it, but I had to. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lie, I found found the first hour quite boring. Right. So I I was like struggling to stay awake watching the first hour. And it was only really when they were in the Japanese man's house and they saw the photos and stuff that I kind of twigged, oh, this is a horror film. I think we know what it was. 
up until right. then. Can I just say this is the uh, the shittest Bob Marley documentary I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm deleting that out because no one fucking that. No, don't, don't. That's great. It's not. It's not your fault. These two ideas together. <laughs> Let's talk about the um, the exorcism scene. Um, yes, I mean, yes. I think for, for my from what what uh, Andy actually sort of alluded to earlier, but I think there are three sort of perceptions of that sequence. So the first one is we take everything at face value, the same way that the cop is doing. So basically, the the Japanese man is a force of evil. The shape what the shaman is doing is trying to heal uh his daughter to you know creating an exorcism to to um you know expel the the demons uh out, out of his daughter so that's that's one way of of looking at it what i was sort of thinking is that he's sort of like a as 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 dave said he's sort of a fraud and um sort of a snake or salesman he and he's just do he's just sort of making a load of noise trying to get this money out of the cop but and possibly what we're seeing regarding the Japanese person is that he's found a dead. What I thought anyway was that he's found a dead person, and he's he took a photo of, of him, and it's his weird way of honoring the dead. You know, I, I thought you oh, know wow. this is his sort of this is his ritual to sort of honor because it's more peaceful. The the funny thing is the director is um is sort of he, he I think he's pers- purposefully making even though it's still quite creepy the fact he's got all these dead chickens around and stuff like that i i thought that he was his way of sort of on it was like a japanese tradition to sort of honor the dead in in this way and so that's that's what i kind of that was the way i saw your thought when i first watched it a few years ago and then and then my but then what's actually happening is that they're actually this is a collaboration right so what what the shaman is actually doing is he's trying to er, everything that the woman in white is sort of um doing to protect that household the the shaman is actually take is actually you know um reversing that yeah and and basically the the japanese man is basically up to no good with this new dead person that he's found or possibly that he actually ended up killing Wow. Why? Why does the yeah. why does the Japanese guy like die? Well, not die, but he, you get the impression that the shame has killed him because he didn't finish the yeah, ceremony. Because it's so he because he's off. essentially bringing somebody back to life. He's his his own life force is being affected. So he's so knackered. And- but isn't it because the woman in white is outside as well? Outside whose house? Yeah, the Japanese guy. She was the Japanese watching. man's house. Yeah. Yeah. Was she, she outside was his house? Yeah, yeah yeah she was outside because he's in bed yeah. and he's like in pain and then she, then yeah. she she he looks towards his door and she's there yeah right well because at that point when it started to look like the japanese guy was going to die and he was almost like kind of some kind of voodoo ritual like with a doll he was like feeling the pain wasn't he so at that point i was like wow i thought okay the japanese guy is some, some kind of evil dude and the shaman is the real McCoy. At that point, I was like, "Oh wow, that's pretty cool." If you can, if you have this sort of power, and so I was like, "Wow, he's going to kill him." And then, and I was like, "Wow, you're so close to killing this evil dude." And then the and the ritual stops just before he dies. So he's almost like he's on his death's door. But they stop the stop the ritual, and maybe in that case, it's like it doesn't affect you. If you don't die, because it, it's all in your head kind of thing, some kind of voodoo supernatural thing. So it was like so close to death. But you don't finish the ritual. It's like almost like dying in a dream. It's like you're not actually hurt. So he was fine. So that's what I thought at that point. I was like, wow, that, that's pretty mad. And um, have, has anyone here except Sheffy seen Missing? No. With Tommy Lee Jones? No. So that's a brilliant that's film. film. And and that's about that's kind of like if you if you can get a, an item from somebody, so if you steal someone's comb, something that's a little bit personal to them, and then you sort of you can actually put a curse on them with it. You can make them sick, and you know if you find their comb, if you take their shoe, 
something that is personal to them, you take a photo of them or something, you can create this ritual that you can harm them from a distance, but you have to have some kind of connection to them. So that's what I thought was going on there with the photos. But obviously, like anyone, anyone that's actually seen this film will realise just how far off the money I was with that. But I don't think I'm wrong for thinking it at the time. So re- regarding The Exorcist, the film The Exorcist, um, there's this sort of revisionist take where people have explained it by saying, well, basically she was going through puberty and, um, you know, she ended up getting bad skin, swearing at, at everyone. And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so, you know, it was just basically her kind of going into womanhood. And so because I kind of knew about... Using a cross as a so I had... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what all girls do when they go through puberty, right? <laughs> I, that's because I had that on my mind before watching the wedding for the first time. When this was happening to the girl, I was thinking, well, this possibly might be an explanation of what, for what's going on. And I mean, she's not really old enough to be a, going into a teenager, but possibly because she starts sort of swearing at her, her dad and, and all that stuff. And the the, fun, the thing is, is that so then when you we were talking about this regarding. Paris, Texas, and the fact that you know you watch a film for the first time, you feel one way towards like a child. But then, yeah, yeah, yeah. knowing what I know about the whole twist, you watch the that exorcism scene, and it's much more difficult to watch because he is actually harming the shaman is actually harming the little girl. So you know when she's saying like you know she's like contorting and she's saying you know make him stop. It's really sort of difficult to watch. Wow! Oh shit! Yeah. Because you think it's the demon inside getting... Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got to just take this pain. You've got to take this pain and then the demon's gone. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. Possibly she was abused by the Japanese man because when he finds the shoe, he confronts his daughter and says, did you meet the Japanese man? And she she did say yes. She doesn't talk about um, what actually happened. Yeah, and, she's really blasé. You know, oh, fuck yeah, because he raped that woman, didn't he? Yeah, so that's... Yeah, the, that, and yeah. what I was... And regarding my first viewing, what I was thinking was the woman in white is actually just orchestrating this all because she was previously abused by the Japanese man. So I kept on thinking, so when, when they throw him off the cliff and you sort of, she has sort of like a knowing look, almost like a smile. I was thinking, oh, she's just, she's just taking revenge on a guy that abused her. Wow. Fuck man. Yeah. Think, think about that. Um, yeah, no, and that's no. what you know it'd been a while since like a filmmaker had sort of played with an audience perception like that I, you know it's a it's it really sort of um especially when you sort of re-watch it you think oh wow yeah. this you know, this 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 writer director is really he knows you can tell he kind of lays it's sort of like magicians they make you look this way while they do something like behind your back and that's he's kind of worked on yeah that's, that's Andy do you, do you agree with that or yeah I, I'm so I'm just so confused by um what like I don't even know what I think at this point like because there's just so many different like you could say something Dave could say something Carl could say something and I could agree with all of them like <laughs> even if it was slightly different yeah. um, <laughs> but I think yeah there's basically a deleted alternative Ending. Alternative ending yeah, on, on YouTube. It, yeah. Have you guys? Did you guys watch it? Or no, I read about it. I did watch it. I've just read it. Yeah, Dave, you, have you heard about this? No, I, I didn't know. About so it. what? What actually happens? The is that the, it's just sort of like a quiet road where uh, the Japanese man is sort of standing and sitting on the side and opposite him is like a bus stop and there's like a small there's like a l- little family with a little girl and he sort of starts like waving at the little girl and starts sort of coaxing her to sort of cross the road to sort of see him but then like the parents stop her from doing it and then basically the shaman parks up and the japanese man gets in the van with with him and then they drive off and the woman and white sort of watch them drive off but he he cut he cut out that that um that scene because he thought is sort of hand feeding like to the audience so so when you say an alternative ending or was that like well, yeah, no, a, sorry, it's not an additional. alternative ending, but an X, yeah, yeah, probably Don't after. See. So he did what the guy from Jalakatu didn't do and had that caveman scene, which wasn't needed. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's not that. Yeah, nice. Okay. Yeah, I've read, cool. I've read loads about this film. Like, like a lot of people were saying that that guy who was struck with lightning, it was actually um, like the woman in white as the angel. 
driving them away from the devil and like the whole um you know the whole three days that's um peter's uh, denial of jesus and also later on it's yeah, wait yeah, until yeah. the rooster crows three times there's yeah. all of that and then um, the resurrection of the um the japanese man um the antichrist imagery from the holes in the hands there's, there's so many layers to this like on a religious there's a moment where he- where the Japanese man shows stigmata, isn't that very, yeah. very brief? Very brief shot. But the woman in white yeah. as well. I mean, yeah. the woman in white is holding the policeman's hand. Yeah. He's got stigmata. Yeah. And also, the um, when the priest goes to see the devil, um, he's holding a weapon, and then, like, there's a little look, and like, I was like, what's that Sick little look on that? Yeah, and it's like the sin, thou shalt not kill. There's a lot of, like, um, yeah, because the devil's like, holy shit, you, you've come to kill me, so the devil's already won. It's really, it was really interesting that the crow will crow three times, and I was like, oh wow, because that to, to us that's really obvious, but to other viewers in Korea, I guess that wouldn't be that obvious, you know, with Christianity yeah. and stuff. That, that well, you know, are, we all know, doubting da- da- Thomas and stuff, yeah, but I'd say, I would say they're more they, in Korea, they would. Like they would be more leaning towards Buddhism or Confucius. What's it called? Confucianism, the version of Confucius. They they're Christian. I reckon they would only be about twenty percent Christian, but if, if that, I would predict twenty percent in Korea. Another theory is that this is sort of a retelling of the Book of Job. So, Dave, as the qualified um, theologist of our group, would you no, care to tell? To the Bible. Andy, Andy's your man when it comes to the Bible. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. No one's Andy... more up. Yeah. It's basically why, I think from memory, why God permits evil in the world through experience. It's about God and Satan, and they and Satan says, if you took away all of Job's, you know, every, everything that's precious Wealth, to him. Wealth, material still... comforts. Yeah. Would he still sort of be faithful? Do you know what? I'm, I'm going to have to go, guys. I need to watch this film again. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> be careful be careful saying how good this film is it's, it's not it it's not that good no honestly Dave it is really really good so Dave you didn't enjoy it that much is that what you're saying this film whatever this film is as a film I don't think it's that great I'm sorry as always Dave doesn't like the film blah 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 but it, it, it's like if you think how insane that opening scene was where that guy is handcuffed outside none of you even talked about that there's this lunatic who seems off his nut on drugs. Yeah. Is handcuffed outside. You almost forget about that. It's like by the end of the film, you, you'd have no recollection of that opening scene. And it's fucking crazy. So you cannot have a two and a half hour horror film. I'm sorry. You just can't. No matter how many religions you want to bring into it, no matter how much. How, how long is The Shining? Stuff, certainly not two and a half hours. And, you know. The sh- and there's also like with The Shining and The Shining doesn't it's actually two film. hours 26 minutes so <laughs> good, good point okay. <laughs> The Shining is like them driving they're quite happy they get to the they set the, it sets the time but this film starts with a medicine where he kind of gets back and they're like I'll go and have something to eat the dead aren't going anywhere and stuff so it's right into the the gritty horror of it but yeah like you f- completely forget about that opening scene by the time you're towards the end of this film. You'll have no recollection of that. So I I think this film is incredibly clever, the way it bounces back and forth on itself. But ultimately, I don't particularly like this film. I I thought the daughter was the acting, was the best acting in the film for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was yeah, brilliant. She was amazing. Yeah, yeah well, and that's the thing, like, hi, little girl, what we're going to do is we're <laughs> yeah, going to put yeah. you in a room and we're going to cover you in blood holding a knife while there's going to be someone who's basically covered in blood on the floor <laughs> and we're not going to pay for your therapy for that for you're going to need for the rest of your life. It's mad, isn't it? But it's just like, just the awkward teenager that's like where he's, she's asleep and he's checking her for like the boils and stuff. He's lifting mm-hmm. up her, a nightgown and she wakes up and she's like, what would the neighbours think if they saw you lifting up my mic? <laughs> but what's 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 the woman from Nexus called? The girl in Nexus, called? Nancy Reagan. Was, yeah, no. What's her? Is it what's is that? What's her actual Linda name? Blair. Linda Blair. Linda Blair. I kept on saying Linda Hamilton. Yeah, it's Linda Blair, isn't it? 
So that is a more extreme role to play. Like, you know, a lot of kids have had to be in a horror film. And I assume the parents are just like, I don't want, I don't want my kid to be in this film. Oh, how much? Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, fair enough. Fuck it. Yeah. It's like it's when you go to Michael Jackson's parties. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I will stand by this. This film, I don't know, you just can create a film where you can send people down rabbit holes and red herrings and ultimately, you know, it, it was like lost. It almost felt like they were making up, well, they, they were making up as they went along. And I, yeah, this film is not my I mean, I, I, complete, I completely disagree that they were making it up as they're going along. I think they, I think everything is calculated but it doesn't. It, but it doesn't make. It does make sense. I, I, I will tear this film apart scene by scene if we if we want to go down that road. It just doesn't make sense. There are some scenes that don't make sense. Like why? Why is the shaman scared? He looks genuinely terrified when he kind of finds himself driving and there's like locusts landing on his car and stuff. Why is he scared? What's he scared of? Because the would you, the I don't know. What, would, you, would you just be driving? Would you just be driving normally then? Would you and <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> if I was, if I, yeah, I would be actually. Yeah, if I was what? in cahoots with the devil, if that's what I did every day, I wouldn't be that bothered about it. <laughs> yeah, if I wasn't, in, if you I wouldn't wasn't be bothered. <laughs> you wouldn't be bothered. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. All cool. right, twat. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because <laughs> if your best mates with the actual devil. I don't think some bugs landing on it your windshield will bother you that much. If you're scared, you're scared. Oh, you, you think it's like... Yeah, you're he's what, not, you're he's just not think... best mate. He was working for him, and he he's like running away, and the devil... The devil is sending him a fucking message saying, get your fucking ass back here. You'd shit yourself if Dave from the corner shop rang you and said, come back to the shop, let alone the <laughs> devil calling you back. That's no, why but, he's scared. But it, well, you don't know if it was the devil. It could have been the woman in white who was trying to scare him. To warn him no, off. It was the devil well, that's the thing. calling so, him back because uh, he hadn't finished his job. If it, I mean anything, you would be. Uh, you. It's not like he's expecting it to rain locusts, is he? So uh, that would be slightly surprising, no matter whether you're you're in cahoots the devil or not. You'd be like, "What's going on?" I shit myself why, if there's a daddy long legs in the van. But why is he? But what's why is he fearful? If you're, if that's how you roll, you roll in the world of evil spirits and shit like that if that's your day job literally his day job why would that be so terrifying for you a kind of locust landing on your windshield i'd be like this is fine this is nothing compared to what i deal with on my daily basis of real mccoy evil spirits that can kill you so honestly guys bring it on i will tear it, i will tear this film to pieces you haven't done a good job of that part so mm. <laughs> Right, so at the end, the woman in white, uh, the policeman says to the woman in white, why why me? Why has this happened to me? And she says, because you... Oh, you might tell me out here. Because of your sins. You tried, you because tried of your to kill sins, him. Yeah. yeah, you tried yeah. to kill yeah. him, but then he was like, but my daughter got sick first. Yeah. What's, yeah. what's, what's, what, what's going on there? What have I missed there? Is he just I'm chosen to subpoena? His, his, his... No, you're spot on there. Like, his sin was murder. They shall not kill. And he was saying, well, hang on a minute. Like, I was only doing that because my daughter was getting sick. But in it doesn't matter. Like, the, the sin is the sin. And he's tried to explain it away. Like, that's, that's the end of it. it the, the reason why his daughter got infected was... She took the bait. It, it's random. It's not... There, there wasn't... Yeah, I actually, that was my favourite line in the whole film. I love the idea of that. Why my daughter... I, he was, this is just an evil demon that goes fishing in the village, and I, I love that. I thought that was that was actually my favourite line in the whole film. Imagine that you just you just see who who bites. Literally, who can I fuck up? And I did love that. That really blew me away. That that line. I, I still I didn't like this film. I'm sorry. I mean, I know you, we already heard that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to keep on repeating it. <laughs> Well, that is... The wailing, I mean, more like a... the failing. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, no, so, film, yeah, it was I okay. mean... It was, it was okay, this film. Nah, this film's amazing, Shaf. No it's amazing. <laughs> I, th- I think, uh, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, it, it might be that, um, in, you know, I, I knew that 
one or two of you it wouldn't sort of click with you and that's fine i mean uh, after the first time i saw it i was you know it's one of those things where you're in your in a dark room because the thing is a lot of the film takes place during the daytime a lot of the sort of, you know horror scenes take place in the daytime and that last half an hour takes place at night and when so the last sort of couple of in- images you see are basically in complete darkness except you see the devil's eyes and you know mm. the face the face of the cop yeah, kind of, um, be, be. so you know that's kind of that those images were sort of in my head when i saw it a few years ago i, I kept, couldn't sort of stop sort of thinking about it so um I loved you know, it, man. as I said, as I said, it worked, it worked for me and it worked for Jen apparently as well. So, um, it's a psychological thriller, man, a mystery, a fucking zombie, bloody black magic. It's an epidemic yeah. movie. Well done. I guess this is the point where we do the one word review and, but I would, it would be good to hear Jen's one word review as well mm-hmm. <laughs> at one point. So if I, um, if I went upstairs and, uh, <laughs> woke her up i'm pretty sure she'd have two words for me (laughs) (laughs) so i might just leave that and text you later then jen what's your one word review (laughs) fuck off (laughs) thank you thank you (laughs) um right okay cool so yes here is your one word reviews it's the one word review the one word review Except for Dave, who spends 15 minutes talking about being so great. Andy, what's your one word review? Stimulating. Stimulating. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) You sure that's not Jen's word? (laughs) 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 Uh, Kyle, what's your one word review? You've had like five seconds to think about it. Fine. Yeah, fine. There you go. That's your one word fine. of you. Yeah. And it's the best. <laughs> it's Dave. the worst. <laughs> Dave, what's your one word review? Okay, right. My one word review is that if the film like starts it. comically, I struggle to move away from that. But that could be a cultural thing. And, you know, it's kind of anti-heroes who are a little overweight and stuff is antithesis of Western heroes. So fair enough, I dig that. But my point, as I've said, I two and a half hours is far too long for a horror film that starts in a horrific manner. Every single person watching this film has forgotten that first scene. And they'll even forget some of the other scenes of other murders and carnage that sort of drops in. So to me, I do feel that this film, it... it you know, you, I feel like you can take, you are the power as a writer or a director. You can take the audience on a journey that you want to take them on. You can send them back and forth on themselves, make them suspect something, make them suspect another thing. And I'm not sure it is as clever as people make that out to be. I think you can just manipulate people. It just as long as the person's concentrating, you can take them down any road you want to. So for me, this sort of back and forth, oh, they are the good, bad. They're good, they're bad. Who's that? There's too much ambiguity with this film. And ultimately, I don't get it. And I'm not satisfied when I watch the ending. Maybe if I watch it a second time, I might go, wow, I'm so stupid. I just didn't get it. So I will watch this film again. And I'm looking forward to watching it again. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because you said, so your problem is that you didn't get it. Yeah, but I don't think it's because I'm too stupid. I just think... I think there's so many plot holes and I, I can, I will tear, if, if you want to sit down and watch this film with me for two and a half hours, I will just tear it to pieces because it just, it doesn't add up for me. It doesn't add up. I still don't get, I don't really get it. I don't get what the shaman is doing unless he's just sold himself, unless he has sold his soul to the devil. He's making money. Just, yeah. Like, I love the scene. I'm, I'm not sure if you, any of you viewers have watched Mind, Body, and Kick Ass Moves. Listeners. But I remember when when he was like, he did. He was in the fountain, sorry, in the waterfall, in the ice cold waterfall, with everyone. And that is the Japanese sort of um, trait where they go into the waterfall and they kind of empty their mind. And I believe like the Shinto religion is ancestry worship and stuff. So I love that scene where he's in the 
waterfall trying to get closer to the ghosts and spirits and stuff. So again, at that point, I thought he was fighting evil. And I feel deliberately, they sent me down one road only to take me out of it. And then all of a sudden he grows a tail and looks like the devil. And yeah, I'm sorry. Just not my cup of tea. I prefer, I prefer it when people say not my cup of tea rather than this is a bad film. So I respect you for saying that, uh, Dave. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Oh, my, oh, actually, I haven't said my one-way review. My one-way <laughs> review is I'm going to be an idiot and uh, not give one word, but I'm going to give three words, and it's sleight of hand. Ooh. So, yes, um, welcome to Vegas. You should all watch this movie. All of you. Please, please, on a Saturday night, sit down, get a pizza, do it in one sitting, bring your loved ones. It's great. Enjoy oh, yourself. Abso- absolutely. I completely agree with that. Ford versus Ferrari, I would recommend not watching. But this film, I would <laughs> recommend watching 100%. Okay. I would definitely. Yeah. Okay. Anyone enough. says, Should I watch The Wailing? I'd be like, Watch it and see what you think. Yeah, it's okay. it is fascinating. It is a fascinating film, well worth a watch. So you know, guess what, guys? We've done two rounds, right? Whoa, no we sort of uh, they we sort of ended on a low note. Uh, we've and, only, uh, had, we've, we've um, only had one person have a rage quit once, and that was Dave when he fucking went mental and said, "I'm not doing this shit anymore," and we all ripped him. <laughs> and then ten minutes later, he was like, "I'm sorry, I'm coming back." <laughs> I was working, viewers, viewers, I was doing two jobs at the time. I'm sure that's going to, I'm sure we're going to get another one of those in a, in a couple of weeks, whatever, yeah. but there you go. I think Next week, week, Dave's depressing description. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, we are reaching the third round now. So we're hitting the reset button and now it is over to your choice of film. So what is the oh, next gosh. choice of film? Oh, All right, guys. <laughs> Thought about this long and hard, yeah? <laughs> so we're all going to be watching 2021 film Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yes. Legend, yes. legend, 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 legend. <laughs> Finally. I'm going to have to pay for this problem. again. Oh. Yep. I don't even know. Is that even on, on Amazon? To, okay, well, then. For those of you that can, if you want to yeah. watch it with me at home, feel free. <laughs> I'm dressed up as Sub Zero and come around to your house. Definitely. <laughs> Get ready. Oh, I really want to put the theme um, song in the pod, but I can't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, come back. Get Andy to do his own version. <laughs> Get ready, yes, guys. Mortal Kombat. Oh, man. I, you know what? I'm kind <laughs> Because I know I'm just going to be ranting about... Anyway, let's not go. Go on. Go on. So, go I'm, on. So, I'm, Kyle, I'm so um, happy. I'm so Kyle, happy. Kyle, give us, give us our, our, our outro. Okay. So you've been listening to Who Dropped the Popcorn. Uh, you can email us at whodroppedthepopcorn at gmail.com. Just send us your review. Just send us some comments. Any questions, we'll read them out. We might not. We'll see. <laughs> Tweet us at Who Popcorn. We're on Insta at Who Dropped the Popcorn. You can listen on Apple, Google, Deezer, Stitcher, and Acast. Spotify and more are coming soon. Uh, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs>